Elections in Singapore have undergone significant transformation over the years, particularly in political campaigning, where once it was dominated by fiery rallies with huge turnouts. The last two elections in the city-state the 2020 general election and the recent presidential election have seen candidates increasingly turning to social media as an avenue to promote their manifestos and attract more voters. Fueled by the digital age, the role of social media has indeed emerged as a potent force, reshaping the strategies embraced by political candidates and parties. Moreover, the rise of social media influencers introduced a fresh dimension to the campaign landscape. Will it eventually make political rallies a thing of the past? Yahoo Southeast Asia spoke to several experts who gave their views on such a development. Dr. Tracy Lowell, a senior lecturer at the Singapore Management University SMU specializing in social media campaign strategies, highlights the pivotal role of social media in contemporary elections. She observes that social media has assumed a central position, working in tandem with, rather than replacing, traditional campaign methods. Social media is no longer optional, she asserts. In the past, you could get away with just traditional campaigning, but it is no longer a choice. You have to be online as well. Dr. Lo points to notable examples, such as former presidential candidate in Coke Song's campaign, which demonstrated that running a digital campaign is viable. Ng had made the decision not to employ physical banners and posters, citing limited resources and a commitment to environmental sustainability. Instead, he emphasized social media as the cornerstone of his strategy, aiming to engage younger Singaporeans who could then convey his message to their older family members. Dr. Lowe notes that the rise of social media as a political campaigning tool began during the 2015 and 2020 general elections. As both the People's Action Party PP and the Workers' Party WP stepped up their social media efforts. WP, in particular, utilized sleek videos to connect with the electorate. In the 2015 election, the Workers' Party made a significant impact with their sleek online presence, Dr. Lowe recalls. The PP had consistently maintained a good social media presence as well, with many of their MPs actively engaging online. Smaller parties have harnessed social media to reach a broader audience, although their approach may not be as curated and sleek as that of the WP or PP. Parties like Singapore Democratic Party and Progress Singapore Party have come close, but others tend to rely on a more individualistic approach. Dr. Lowe believes that social media has played a crucial role in leveling the playing field for smaller parties, in providing a cost-effective alternative to traditional media. Without a doubt, social media has enabled smaller parties to connect with the electorate in ways traditional media wouldn't, given its high costs. These smaller parties lack the resources to blanket Singapore with posters or ads. Social media has, to some extent, equalized the playing field. She says, Dr. Alan Chong, senior fellow at the Center for Multilateralism Studies at the S. Rajaratnam School of International Studies RSIS believes that social media amplifies candidates' connections with their target audiences through mass broadcasting or personal interaction. Social media serves as an amplifier for candidates' engagement with their target audiences. In the past, opposition parties and their leaders faced challenges in maintaining a presence between elections, let alone covering their constituencies during election periods. He notes, Regarding the evolving landscape of social media platforms, Dr. Lowe observes, I think we are seeing a move towards certain platforms coming into prominence. Political campaigning used to be more or less on Facebook, but now we see candidates venturing into TikTok and Instagram, mainly to reach younger audiences. She goes on to highlight that presidential candidates Singh and Tharman Shanmugaram had recently created Instagram accounts and successfully gained significant numbers of followers. Tharman started his Instagram account in the lead-up to presidential elections, and he now has 100,000 followers. He has also gained over 42,000 followers on TikTok. Ng has quickly garnered more than 100. 000 followers after creating his official page on July 17. His short videos on Instagram, known as Reels, received tens of thousands of views. 
the third presidential candidate, Tan Kin Lien, is active on Facebook and has about 70 000 followers on that platform, with his videos garnering thousands of views. On the role of influencers in politics, Dr. Lo draws parallels with corporate brands, highlighting the value of influencers in reaching audiences that the candidates may not ordinarily connect with. She notes that political candidates have been collaborating with young content creators like SGG, as well as participating in podcasts to cater to diverse audiences. These platforms help to present a more relatable, human side of the candidates. When you share your message through influencers, you're essentially providing free publicity to the political candidate. It's almost like free advertising and reaching out to an audience that wouldn't typically follow you. It's an effective strategy to expand your reach. She remarks, Dr. Chong, on the other hand, believes that while influencers can act as propagandists, one does have to exercise caution against their overly simplified content which can distort complex political issues. Indeed, the oversimplification of political discourse through social media could have an adverse effect on Singapore's long-term interests, and Dr. Chong advises voters to recognize the complexities of governance and not rely solely on candidates' social media presence to gauge their capabilities. The recent presidential election which Tharman won with a convincing 70.4% of the votes showed that voters are capable of making nuanced decisions despite the influence of social media. Consider how close the percentages of the two losing candidates were. This shows that some people were actually putting the two losing candidates almost on par. After all, 14% and 16% are not very far apart. Dr. Chong says, when you put those two so-called losing percentages together, it amounts to 30% of the electorate. This indicates that social media influencing can only go so far. At the end of the day, people still think of the presidency as a part of Singapore's complex equation of governance. Social media has become an integral tool in modern political campaigning, but both political experts which Yahoo Southeast Asia spoke to agree that traditional media still holds enduring value. In Singapore's historical election campaigns, traditional methods like door-to-door -door canvassing, public rallies, and printed materials like posters have played a significant role. During this year's presidential election, the Elections Department ELD encouraged candidates to harness platforms capable of reaching a wide audience including broadcasts and social media. It notably discouraged in-person rallies, with no designated rally sites for presidential elections. Its reasoning was that rallies, given their nature and format, could potentially be divisive and not congruent with the unifying role of the elected presidency. Dr. Chung believes that, for general elections, rallies remain crucial in energizing the voter base and engaging dedicated supporters. You have to realize that even the PP relies heavily on rallies to excite their voter base and card-carrying supporters. The National Day Rally, for instance, continues to be a live event, despite the option to watch it via live stream on social media. This preference for live rallies suggests that the appeal lies in the genuine connection between candidates and voters. He explains, Dr. Lowe shares a similar perspective when you have a new party challenging an incumbent like the PAP, building recognition and connecting with the constituents are crucial. Nothing beats the personal touch, shaking hands, offering a friendly arm around the shoulder, and engaging in face-to-face -face conversations. While social media is a valuable tool, it can't replace the human touch. It's somewhat the lazy way out. People still want to see candidates actively walking the ground, working hard to earn their votes rather than just sitting behind a computer screen. It is clear that social media will be a pivotal aspect of political campaigning. However, both experts emphasize that it must be regarded as just one facet of a multifaceted approach. Traditional campaign methods, face-to-face -face interactions, and rallies will continue to play a significant role in effectively engaging voters. And with social media influencers trying to shape the political landscape, it will be more important than ever that voters are equipped with the abilities of discernment and critical thinking in order to ensure that democracy thrives in the digital age.